So today we're going to be talking about light near dissociation. And as you know, the optic pathway has an afferent component, which is composed of the retina, the optic nerve, the chiasm, and the tract to the geniculate body. But for the pupil, the efferent fiber is the Ettinger-Westphal nucleus, and it starts here as the third nerve Ettinger-Westphal nucleus, and then travels to the ciliary ganglion to comprise the efferent pathway to the iris. So when we have a problem on the light pathway, but an intact near pathway, we call that light near dissociation. So the light pathway is carried on the afferent system, and you should know that it is a bilateral pathway, and so each pretectal nucleus applies both heading or west one nucleus. And so when we shine the light in one eye, both pupils should constrict. If we do a near reaction, both pupils should constrict. So when we have light near dissociation, there are very few areas where we can dissociate the light near pathway. So one is you can damage the afferent pathway. So in this example, the optic nerve has been damaged and the person has no light perception because there's a lesion in their optic nerve. That means the light pathway will be impaired. But it also means that the nearer pathway, which doesn't require the light, can still talk to the adding or nucleus, the ciliary ganglion, and to the iris. And so that will produce a light near dissociation in the eye that has been blinded. And if you do it in both eyes, both eyes will be no light perception, but you'll still have a near response. So even if someone's totally blind, no light perception, the pupils can still constrict because the efferent pathway is intact, and that efferent pathway is carried on the third nerve from the Ettinger Westphal nucleus to the ciliary ganglion to the postganglionic nerve. Now, in bilateral light near dissociation, you can either have a bilateral afferent pathway problem or you can damage the nerve at the pretectal nuclei. So, lesions of the pretectal nuclei, like compressive lesions like pineal tumors or the dorsal midbrain syndrome, also produce light near dissociation of both pupils because they are affecting the pretectal afferent input to the adding or Wessel nucleus. The light pathway will be interrupted at this location, but the near pathway can still talk to the adding or Wessel nucleus, and that is a dorsal midbrain type of light near dissociation. And finally, we can have light near dissociation here at the level of the ciliary ganglion, but for an entirely different reason. When you have the ciliary ganglion and the postganglionic nerve damaged, it'll regrow and normally it regenerates back to the target, but sometimes it regenerates aberrantly, which means fibers that used to go to the ciliary body to accommodate the lens now are going to the iris and are constricting the pupil. So in that case, the light pathway will be totally intact, but the near pathway might show damage. If you damage the ganglion on the efferent pathway, both the light and the near will both be damaged because that's the same nerve. However, when it regrows, the near pathway might still be able to fire even though the light pathway is damaged and that will produce a different type of light near dissociation, efferent light near dissociation from the postganglionic or the ganglion being damaged with aberrant regeneration leading to the near reaction being intact, even though the light reaction is poor. So we can have dissociation between the light and the near pathway on the afferent side, unilaterally or bilaterally. On the pretectal side, at the dorsal midbrain, connecting to the edinger westphal nucleus, that's Argyle-Robertson pupil and the dorsal midbrain syndrome, and at the ganglion and postganglionic, the most common cause of that, adystonic pupil. And so you need to know these forms of light near dissociation.